Hello my loves, welcome back to my channel. I am doing... I don't know, come on brain, it's filming time. I'm doing a was that haul worth it video, um, monitoring my beauty purchases and uh, I'm also going to talk to you guys about my 2023 low buy. So this video is going to be all about beauty purchasing, uh, what I purchased in the past and how I feel about it, and my beauty purchasing going forward. So, uh, let's talk about the stuff that I purchased in January of 2022. Now, I don't know if you can notice this mess behind me. Um, many of you will know I'm currently in the process of preparing to move, um, and this is my life right now. There's a fly in here. <laughs> I just, I can't. So because of the packing situation, I do not have the products that I purchased in January of 2022. They're somewhere in here. I don't know where they are. And I, at this point, I don't care. What I do have is my list of things that I purchased. So I picked up the Maybelline Lash Sensational Sky High Mascara. I purchased it because of online hype and instant regret. I didn't like the mascara. I ended up decluttering it. Then I had the Davines uh, Minu shampoo and hair mask. I bought the big one liter bottles, like the salon size bottles, because I love that stuff. It's fantastic. And at the time, like I didn't need to buy shampoo and conditioner. I haven't even cracked those open because I still have an excess of shampoo and conditioner to eventually work my way through. So those purchases certainly could have like waited, uh, but they didn't. I, I chose to buy them and there we go. I also picked up the Summer Fridays uh, Perfume Oil Trio. This was a holiday set from uh, 2021, which I spotted in store probably late December, maybe very early January, and uh, I picked it up because I loved the scents. They're little like rollerball um, fragrance oils and they smell really summery and wonderful. I honestly just didn't really use them enough because I was trying to pen perfumes at the time and, you know, I had too much perfume. It is what it is. I did pick up Rapid Lash, which is actually in my bedroom. I'm not even going to bother going to get it. I'll just stick a photo on the screen. Um, I've used Rapid Lash in the past and I love it. It For me, it helps to, um, like, maintain lashes and grow them longer, which is awesome. I love that stuff and I think I'm just going to have it be a staple in my stash for, you know, the foreseeable future because I really enjoy it and I find that it works well for me. Next up, I had the Ilua Lux Solitaire Lashes. So these are my favorite lashes. I'm wearing them today. What I do with these lashes is I cut them in half and I wear them as a demi lash. They're, you know, they offer a little bit of lift to the eye without being too big because I don't have a whole lot of real estate space on my eyelids. Um, large eyelashes can really like, they just, they look too big on me when they start to like, you know, hit up near my eyebrow. I just think it looks over the top. It's not really the kind of look that I go for. So the Solitaire lashes I love. I ended up buying them on Amazon um, and I bought maybe six or eight pair. I can't remember. Still got a whole bunch of them left. They last for ages. Uh, I definitely don't think I got a really good deal on them, but I couldn't find them in store anywhere. And I'd been looking for years and I know that they are stocked in select stores, but I think they're a very popular style. So every time I would go, like they'd have a sale, I'd go to see if a store had them. They would just, no, they didn't have them, so I ended up just buying them on Amazon. I don't regret that purchase because I have consistently used them since I purchased them, which is great. And the last thing that I purchased was a pack of Slip Silk Scrunchies. I really love these scrunchies. I think based on my experience, whenever I talk about Slip Scrunchies, uh, I feel like there's a big divide. People either love them or hate them or they just don't see the point of them. 
I personally love them. Um, my hair responds really well to them. I feel like I don't get as much breakage. But also, I like um, I like the fact that they offer because I have fairly fine hair. Um, when I tie my hair up in a ponytail, because they are like a scrunchy style, um, I buy the like the mini scrunchy versions, not like the big ones. Um, they offer a little bit of a lift to the ponytail, which I quite like. So um, I don't regret buying them. Uh, I will say some of my oldest slip scrunchies, not the ones that I purchased from uh, 2022, they are starting to sort of stretch out a bit, which is, I think, um, I think it's just part of the parcel when you buy um, elastic hair bands of any description. Um, so I don't think they're the type of thing that's going to last you a lifetime. I definitely think that, you know, over time they do wear out and they do need to be replaced. But I'm kind of, I'm kind of okay with that. Now, when it comes to my January 2023 purchases, um, technically I haven't bought anything, but I do have something that's on the way. So I actually purchased it in December. It's probably a no-brainer. It's a Beautylish Lucky bag. Um, I haven't received it yet, hence no video unboxing it, and I don't have it here to show you. Um, I really enjoy the Beautylish Lucky bag. It's probably one of the few mystery box type items that I look forward to buying uh, and I look it's one of those things where I was like no I don't need to buy this and it would be better for me to save the money I'm 100% certain that there won't be anything in the box that I actually need I'm totally okay with like I've got enough beauty products and makeup and all that stuff um, but I find it really fun to open. Um, I do enjoy the fact that the products in there are usually very high quality. Uh, I love that there's often like a, a makeup brush from a brand that I love. Uh, and there's usually like an eyeshadow palette. And because I really haven't been buying eyeshadow palettes or much makeup at all, I feel like it's kind of a safe bet for me. Um, it's a little bit of fun. It, I can make a video out of it and, you know, for me, it's one of those things where, yes, technically I could have lived without it, um, but I wanted it and I bought it. So that is coming at some stage. I I was forward thinking about that and I had it, um, like I put down the postal address as my, my next address, so it's not going to come here to me when I'm, I'm not here. Um, and have to be forwarded on so I'll get that when I get it essentially and I will definitely do a video unboxing it because I enjoy doing that. Now the next thing that I want to talk about are my low buy goals for 2023. Um, I sat with this idea for quite a few months. I considered doing a no buy and I've tried one of them in the past and it didn't like, it's, I just don't think it really works for who I am as a person, essentially. I think if I try and do a no-buy, I'm setting myself up for failure. Whereas if I try to do a low-buy, I'm much more within the normal bounds of what I would do in a year anyway. Uh, but this year, I decided that I would do a mindful no-buy and I would sort of set myself some guidelines. Um... I don't want to call them rules because I don't want to sort of, I don't want to have guilt around, you know, not following this to a complete, like, perfect T, if you get what I'm saying. I just want to have guidelines and see how well I can go sticking to them throughout the year. So I'm going to put up some, um, little tables here on the screen. I might just, we'll just scooch over a tiny bit. Um, and I'm going to show you, if you watched my inventory video at the end of 2022, this will look a little bit familiar to you. Um, but essentially I took my inventory categories. I took the numbers that I finished 2022 with 
and I also uh, wrote down the amount that I finished in 2022 to sort of give me an idea of realistically what I can work through throughout a year um, and that helped me to create like a um, traffic light system for items that I can't buy can buy within reason or that I want to be able to possibly purchase but with some rules attached so categories that are marked red it's just a straight up like don't buy it just don't buy from that category because you've got too many as it is the amount that you use up or I use up in a year is not enough to justify adding more to your collection based on or to my stash based on how many I currently own and uh, basically don't buy shit from that category. Things that are marked orange, um, these are things that I can buy but I need to either finish up or declutter two for every one item that I bring in. So for example if you look at this table you'll see concealers I currently have six in my stash and last year I managed to use up three of them. So I wouldn't have an issue with, you know, using up two concealers and then purchasing another one. Or if I use up four, I don't have a problem with buying two because my collection, or no, my stash, we're not calling the makeup and beauty products collections anymore because it's not, in my opinion, or just for me, this is not something I want to collect. This is something I want to buy to use and own and enjoy and then when it's finished, buy more. Um, but with concealers, I'm totally okay if I'm, you know, using up three or four of these products and buying two to replace those because it's still going to shrink what I currently have. So the total amount that I currently have. And then the categories that are marked green, these are things that I can buy within reason. So if we look at my skin category again, for example, I have two face scrubs in my stash at the moment and last year I finished up two. So I'm pretty comfortable buying those products within reason. So by that I mean don't go and buy five face scrubs because you're not going to use five within a year. If I finish up a face scrub and then there's like two on my wish list and I'm halfway through my last one, that's okay. Like I, I'm not going to feel bad about that because I already have a very controlled amount of that particular item and I am going to be able to use it up in a realistic amount of time. The main categories where I'm looking at doing a no buy are obviously like hair products. I have enough. I have enough hair products like I don't need any more unless for some reason something comes up and I need a targeted hair product then fine. Maybe I would consider that but I would also still take a very close look at what I have before I made a decision there and I think it's an absolute no-brainer makeup um, I don't need any makeup I am so excited about finishing more of what I have you'll be able to see for yourself based on some of these categories and the numbers associated with them there's no need for me to be buying new highlighters or new lip products I certainly don't need any blush or any face mists, my goodness. Um, I do have like a really, really strict, strict rule. No eyeshadow palettes. Don't buy any eyeshadow palettes. I'm going to go or try to go the whole year without buying any eyeshadow palettes. I would not be surprised if I get one in the Beautylish Lucky Bag. And I will not be surprised if I get some in PR. I, when that happens, I will just deal with that in a way where, you know, later down the track throughout the year, I'm certainly going to be decluttering categories even more. So I will absolutely be aiming to minimize those areas of my collection a lot. I also do want to be realistic about the fact that throughout the year, there may be makeup items that pop up that I'm just like, I really, really want to get that. And if these are limited edition items and, you know, I'm like, if I don't buy them now, 
I will not be able to get them again and I really 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 do want to buy it then I think I'm just going to take an attitude of if you buy this item you have to declutter x amount of same item um, and I think I'll deal with that when you know if that arises I'll deal with it then um, you know maybe when we're sitting down doing these videos I can take you through my collection and be like right guys I did the wrong thing and I bought an eyeshadow palette let's go declutter five other eyeshadow palettes um, I'm not going to put like a set amount on you know how many items I have to declutter if I'm buying something from what I'm considering a no buy category um, I think I'll, you know, make that decision based on how many of the, the particular item that I have and if I've made any progress with actually finishing some products up throughout the year. So that's basically where I'm going with the low buy. Now, the low buy is not just driven by the fact that I want to um, continue to minimize my collection, basically. It's also driven by the fact that I'm moving and this is... A very expensive endeavor uh, 2022 was very expensive for me I want to build up my savings some more um, that's like probably my number one priority but also the fact that I'm moving means there are gonna be some things that I will need to replace eventually my laptop is getting quite old and I'm not looking at buying a laptop in 2023 I I know I'm not gonna be able to afford that but I would like to start putting some money aside to potentially buy one maybe in the next two or three years. I'm also probably going to need a desk and a chair um, and I'm sure there's going to be other things that I want to purchase um, after I've moved and started to settle in a little bit. Usually what I do when it comes to my like beauty purchasing is every month I set aside a little bit of money so that I have like a little sort of makeup or beauty fund there so that when something does pop up and I want to buy it I can do that without eating into you know things that are necessary for bills and stuff like that so my beauty purchasing has never actually impacted my you know my funds for living essentially and I never want it to I never want that to be like an issue I just it's it's not a healthy thing to do essentially um, so I have budgeted for my beauty purchases in the past and I'm gonna continue to do that in the future but I think now instead of taking X amount of money and setting it aside for beauty purchases um, I might take that X amount of money and let that little nest egg grow for a while and then be like well hey I've got enough money to go and buy myself a new desk chair or a new chair a new like desk or um, I, oh, I really want to buy a new nail lamp and God, if you've noticed my nails in this video, even I feel the need to apologize. They're in shambles, but my gel lamp, um, I suspect it might be on the way out. I don't know. I've had it for so long and I even got it secondhand. So it's no surprise that eventually that's going to need to be replaced and they can be, you know, fairly expensive, um, for a good quality one. I don't need a salon quality one, but I also don't want, you know, a $20 piece of crap off Amazon. Um, so, you know, these are like small things that I would like to invest in, but I want to be able to save up some money first. I am also forward thinking to, you know, Christmas of this year when I'm probably going to want to buy a beauty advent calendar and I am going to let myself do that. I don't want this no buy to be something that I put on myself that is so restrictive that I can't do the things that bring me joy. I also still want to be able to buy things and review them for the channel if I'm inspired by them. Something that comes to mind, which I mean, get ready to shame me on this because the amount, if I had a dollar, like if a dollar dropped out of the sky and hit me on the head every time I thought about this, I'd be a rich woman. Um, I bought the, oh my god, what's it called? I can't even remember. And it's packed somewhere in a box. It's the, um, like, at-home lash extension alternative. 
Lashify. It's called Lashify. Um, I bought a Lashify kit. <laughs> I don't even know how long ago. Like, I I think it was potentially was it 2021 or was it 2022? I can't remember. Anyway, I bought the kit because I was like, I really want to test this out and review it and like see if it's you know really as good as people say. And I never, like, I still haven't used it. I still haven't used it. And that irritates me. I, I will put that down to just being, like, totally, absolutely overwhelmed with life in general. Um, and also trying desperately to, like, use eyeshadows and not being sure if I can use Lashify with eyeshadow. I assume I can, but also then in my head, here we are, we're going on a tangent, just bear with me for a second. Um, because Lashify can be used um, for an extended period of time, so you're supposed to be able to apply them and wear them for like, I think up to a week or something. I'm like, how does that work when I'm using an oil cleanser to remove my makeup? Like, is is that going to sort of negate the ability to use it and I, I just couldn't get my head around that and when I'm kind of like overwhelmed and overstimulated with what's going up in here and around my life I can sometimes be like the easiest solution to this is to just not do it so that's what I did with Lashify but going into this new year I'm going to try and like sort of take life by the reins a little bit more. Um, at the moment, things are just as hectic as they have been for forever. Um, but, you know, that's kind of my goal. You could consider that a New Year's resolution, although I, I don't call it that. I just call it trying to get my shit together. So that's my plan going forward with the low buy. I think what I will do is combine my, you know, my monthly purchases, um, monitoring my beauty purchases and potentially low buy updates and how I'm feeling about the whole kind of deal um, into one like update video monthly however if there's really not much to report like if i didn't buy anything in a month a specific month of 2022 or 2023 and i've got nothing to share i just won't do the updates i'll do them when they're relevant and um we can keep track of it that way i definitely would love to know if you guys are doing any sort of low buy or no buy year um, I, I think like everyone goes through phases of doing them, um, you know, it's ebbs and flows and sometimes it's successful, sometimes it's not. All you can ever really do with these things is give it a go and see how you go with it. And I know I've done them in the past and, you know, I failed miserably and sometimes they've been a bit more successful. And I think over time you get better and better. Um, you Well, you learn more. If you at least give it a go, you get to see what it's really like and you learn more. You learn more about what it's actually like to do a low buy or a no buy and you learn coping mechanisms you learn some tips and tricks just by experiencing it so i'm gonna leave that there guys i hope you enjoyed it and i will catch you in the next one bye